Uh, howdy. Uh, this is getting towards the end of the uh, uh, huge uh, month-long uh, going around Sydney and Australia and off to Adelaide. Uh, we're nearly at the end. I'm now starting my trip back to Sydney. And uh, yeah, it's been Adelaide's been good. Uh, had Christmas with mum and dad and uh, uh, Boxing Day with the rest of the family. Uh, watched a bit of cricket and spent most of my time with mum and dad uh, and uh, had a lot of fun. I uh, feel quite rested today, so that's good. It's a bit of a journey ahead. Right, we're going through to Bar Reynolds today. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow we're heading on to Wagga Wagga and then back to Sydney on the uh, third day. Uh, and that will be it. So I will give you a few updates on some of the sites I'm seeing on the way back to Sydney. We're going via a different route. But I thought this morning it would be good to uh, show you what you, I can see from my balcony in um, the place where I'm staying in Adelaide. I'm staying in the heart of the CBD, a place called Tom's Court. Uh, my brother keeps reminding me it's the um, COVID uh, isolation hotel. Um, so, for whatever that's worth. Anyway, let me show you the view from the balcony. And here it is. It's actually. Uh, right in the heart of the city, as I promised, as I just said. Um, that's looking towards Victoria Square. We're on the southern end of the city. So it's looking towards Victoria Square and just tracking down King William Street, the southern part of King William Street. Slightly quieter part of King William Street. Right down south there. So, yeah, it's been quiet. It's been quiet because uh, of the nature of the time of year, uh, which has been good. The balcony is actually reasonably large, so I'm about to have my breakfast and then I'm going to head off. Well, as I've been driving around Australia, you may have noticed, and as I have, how neat and tidy and just wonderful some of the townships are as we stop through. But there's one thing in particular I noticed about this wonderful town. It started to become a bit of a trend. Now, this particular innovation is actually seems to have taken hold in country towns. And it seems to have changed a lot of the economy. And this is one of the reasons I think that a lot of these towns um, have had the finances to actually improve the township. Um, for example, how nice does the bakery look? And so I'm here to show you one of the reasons Having done some research, one of the reasons why these townships are actually not doing as badly as they might have otherwise been doing earlier before COVID. In doing my research, I discovered the one thing, one innovation that is causing our town, country towns, or at least helping our country towns, to remain above board and in some cases thrive. And that particular innovation is what you see in front of you. This is the first instance in South Australia of something called Silo Park, where they've taken a plain, ordinary silo and painted it to make it look pretty. Now I imagine initially when they just painted it, they thought, oh yeah, we're just painting it, no big deal. But it's actually become a tourist attraction. It's actually a very good reason to stop. These are professional artists who are doing these things um, and uh, they look quite spectacular because they always tell us how much we should uh, take our stops regularly. So I'm actually going to use it as an excuse to pull over and have a bit of a look at some of the silo art between here and Sydney. So uh, I'm actually going to show you these as we go along. And it's rather appropriate that this is the first one because it's the first one, I knew about them, but this is the first one that I really actually grabbed my attention. And it also happens to be a first because as I said a moment ago, it is the first one in South Australia, built in 2017. A couple of interesting things I discovered about this particular piece of art. This is not just any old images of kids. These are legitimate children in the Canalpin 
area and uh, as you can see quite popular with the tourists with the selfies and so on this is actually a working silo so this is fully functional as I say it was painted in 2017 but it was built in 1965 and certainly I think we have to agree architecturally it's definitely an improvement on what was here that this silo and the mural associated with it is all part of beautifying the various country towns and in particular it was uh, there they are there's the kids that formed part of this uh, mural portrait and it wasn't just the silo it actually repainted and did a whole lot of art in the town and I'll show you a few more of those before we get back on the um, way and uh, I'll show you across the various country towns and how this is this particular movement has definitely taken off um, and it's uh, also generated and encouraged people to stop here so that generates more business for this particular community which isn't that large but uh, has that uh, silo and other artistic installations to support it. Um, it seems at the moment, from my point of view, that the um, silo art is actually almost like a competition between townships now, and the more spectacular the artwork, the more people are going to stop at your town. So, although the silo art isn't extensively colourful, it's still very creative and I like the use of local children but some of the other artworks we're going to see will have lots and lots more colour in them but you can see how lovely this looks and as I said I'm just walking back to my car and I'm just going to go past the public toilets because out in front there is a mosaic uh, which uh, makes what would otherwise be an incredibly unattractive place look much more attractive before we get to the mosaic however I do want to point out that it's not just artwork uh, for example SA Water has installed drinking fountains to encourage people to stop and fill up at least with drinks if not with food and other resources of course there's the information booth and the encouragement to connect with locals and as I said in front of the toilet block there is a mule so just go and have a look at that this was all part of a big push as I said to beautify the town even down to the steps of beautifying their rubbish bins <laughs> if that was possible which it is by the looks of it so here we have the mural this is extremely colourful and uh, took a very popular place to stop it's one of the few places where I actually had to wait to go to the toilets I don't, don't think I've ever experienced that in a country town before so definitely a popular place to stop and uh, here we go just to confirm it the mosaic mural has been painstakingly created as a feature at the public toilet site a popular rest stop for travelers so lots of volunteers and people working on the mosaic and there's even there for you to use if you want to look up information for yourself. I'll see you at the next stop. Today being very optimistic about the country towns and this is no exception. How beautiful is this? This is uh, Pinaroo and uh, got brand new toilet facilities. Plenty of them. Which is certainly not what you can say for uh, Kedabon. Uh, by previous stop there were not uh, enough toilets and uh, that's why there was a queue uh, a funny thing I didn't mention but the cafe there 
was uh, also closed which actually now I think about it is rather strange so I started off very very optimistic and uh, to be honest this is the sort of thing I'm seeing in the country looking really really quite spectacular but unfortunately maybe it's just covering over the cracks because there in the distance you can see Penaroo Bakery which is one of the reasons I wanted to stop here closed and uh, not just closed because it's uh, 2 30 it's closed because it's actually closed uh, now if a bakery can't stay open in a country town that is a little bit of a concern particularly since the country town is trying to present itself as being modern and well manicured which it certainly is and looking spectacular plenty of things to see here lovely park right in the heart of town as we are but uh, this is Christmas and there really isn't too many people around I don't know I just don't know anyway hopefully the next stop will be a bit more impressive well because the bakery was closed uh, I decided to stop at the OTR Roadhouse um, and it occurred to me as I was stopping the roadhouse is on the main road whereas the town centre is slightly off and maybe it's the OTR that actually caused the bakery to close this is the wetlands uh, as you can see quite a beautiful place this is a bit more like a typical country town uh, it's not beautified at all but there is some lovely garden here <laughs> very natural garden down the front here and just, just on the side of the road but they've obviously made it uh, made a bit of an effort to uh, establish some plants here but of course the reason I'm stopped here this is a little township to, uh, could wall up and the reason I'm here is not because of these silos but because of these silos splendid uh, very very colorful silos uh, I did mention that uh, some are more colorful than others and this is an example as you can tell of the very distinctive colorings and of course the theme of a soldier and his horse is also a very popular theme so this has definitely been done well um, there's no commercialism about this one this one seems a little bit more authentic than some of the others so uh, yeah definitely worth stopping off here if ever so briefly okay well it's been an interesting day I just pulled in to Bear Reynold that's where I'm staying and this Here's where I'm having dinner. How convenient is that? <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? Well, I think as we head up, you'll see, there we go, some iron pins in there, and indeed, you could probably guess it's a sleeper. Railway sleeper, wooden one. And so not too far away, there should be a railway line. And indeed, if we scan up, you can see the railway bridge. There it is. It's a disused railway bridge. You might wonder how I know. Well, if I zoom in slightly, uh, the bridge takes a huge dip. Clearly, uh, it's a little bit broken. But I also know that it's disused for the following reason. Let me show you a bit further down the track here. Just make my way among the snakes. It's summer here. So just be a bit careful of the uh, Australian bush here. By the way, if you are from overseas uh, and you're worried about the dangerous animals, they're only dangerous if you don't respect them. I thought we had some rain overnight as well which is, uh, yeah, quite nice. 
a little bit cooler today. Here's the railway line. Here it goes. And then it stops. And then there's the uh, main highway. And then it starts again on the other side. I can't go in and investigate, although I would love to, but to make sure I obey the signs. And uh, it even says it is a collapsing structure, so I'll make sure I keep my distance away from there. Now I'm not quite sure what that sign Canberra is about. We are a long, long way from Canberra. There's definitely been a few collapses along this bridge. So there we have it. This uh, bridge just outside of Narendra on the way through to Wagga Wagga and then going on to Sydney. Now I was heading back towards the car and I realised just how beautiful this uh, water is and my walk back to the car so I thought oh well I'll pull the old camera out give it a bit of a look here so obviously quite a heavy downpour here last night I would imagine but uh, yeah certainly looking beautiful and as I said a, a moment ago, the weather's quite cool and very pleasant for driving today. So I certainly can't say that on the past occasions when I've done the trip back from Adelaide to Sydney. Actually, usually 40 degrees and uh, stinking hot. In fact, one of the last occasions I went through here was the uh, bushfires just before COVID hit in 2020. Well, I have to say, this is probably the least impressive of the artworks I've seen so far. The artwork itself is fine, but you can see, particularly down the bottom here, lots of graffiti. Oh, welcome to Wagga Wagga RAAF base, and in particular the RAF Wagga Aviation Heritage Centre. Very beautiful leafy surrounds but most imp uh, importantly for those who are following the tank art there is one just over here not surprisingly based on an aviator okay it's not open that's all right. So, if anyone's visiting, not open on Sundays. Uh, here's the Memorial Gardens, and uh, a little bit more about the tank art. And there's a rather unusual outdoor chapel. And now I'm going to take you over and show you the various planes. Uh, here's our first plane. And this is the A3 Mirage. Uh, just quickly, single seater interceptor ground attack fighter. Empty, it weighs uh, just over seven ton. Just a quick description up here, uh, which you can read in your own leisure, but essentially it says held in high regard by those who flew it and affectionately known as Miracle or French Lady. The Mirage entered service in 1965 and was the first RAAF aircraft capable of flying at twice the speed of sound. As a frontline fighter for over 20 years, the Mirage never fired its weapon in anger and flew the last flight on the 8th of December 1989. It was replaced by the McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing, 
F818 Hornet. So that's uh, that particular aircraft. Now, let's see what's next. Okay, so this one's next. Let's see what this one is. Significantly larger, of course. Very impressive. And it's the uh, F111C. Empty, 24,000 ton. Much, much bigger. Uh, and as it says here, fondly remembered by Australians of all ages for its dump and burn routine at air shows and public events. In its service life, the F-111 was a formidable long-range strike platform which served Australia from the 1st of June 1973 until its withdrawal from service in December 2010. And I'll just scan down so you can read the rest of it, pausing at appropriate junctures. Okay, so that's the F-111. Fantastic. That's the one I remember. Okay, so what's this one here? This is a very fast looking, but rather smaller aircraft. And it's the uh, Mackie A7004. And uh, for this one, 1960s, RAF were looking for a replacement jet trainer for their vampire and wind gels in an attempt to establish an all jet form of pilot training. The Italian Aramachi MB362, sorry, 326H, which quickly became known as the Machi, was selected in August 1965. Uh, it was replaced in 2000, finally replaced in 2000 uh, completely. So again, it's a slightly lighter, definitely a lot lighter, uh, just over 2.2 ton uh, empty. Uh, and I'll just scroll down here. Yep, so Australians best know the Machi from the air shows and public events where they performed with the RAAF aerobatic team, the Roulettes, between 1970 and 1989. So there we have it. Okay, quite a few more to go yet. So let's have a look at the next one. Okay. Go around the back of it. So we've got one more after this. So just going around the back here. And uh, let's have a look. Ah, uh, the meteor. It says. Meteor A77871, the Gloucester Meteor, twin-engine jet fighter, first aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and the only aircraft to serve with the Royal Air Force and And uh, conclude with the RAF officially retired the Meteor in 63. However, Meteors with RAAF and RAF serial numbers continue to fly on Ministry of Supply trails at Edinburgh and Woomera. Uh, empty 4.8 tonnes. So here we go. I'll just come around slightly so you can see the front of the aircraft. There we go. And then we've got our final aircraft over here. So let's have a look at this one because I also want to show you the very historic building. That's uh, out the front here as well as the aircraft itself. So this is as I said in a place called Forest just outside of Wagga Wagga on the East uh, uh, Stewart Highway. So just a quick turn off here. 
अभी क्या है Here's our last, the last of our aircraft. So I'll just uh, go around to the back now and uh, give you some details on this particular aircraft. So, here we are. And this is the Canberra. And again, weight empty, 11 and a half ton. JF Canberra was a British first generation jet powered medium tactical bomber developed in the mid to late 1940s as a replacement to the Haviland Mosquito fast bomber. In 1950, it was named Canberra after National Capital of Australia was the aircraft's first export customer. So we'll read some more data, uh, details here, just scanning down. Okay, and then in the conclusion, by the time it returned to Australia, number two squadron was the last RAAF operational Canberra unit and the A84-235 was retired from service on the 27th of July 1972. That was almost two years old, not quite. So this is the RAF base, I haven't been able to get inside the Heritage Centre because it was closed, but I'm sure inside it's also equally as interesting and definitely worth the visit if you are passing through Wagga Wagga. The main reason I'm here is for this wonderful bit of artwork here. Let me get a bit closer, we could get a better shot if I get a bit. So here we are, Murray Bateman, lovely art silo, probably the best one I think of the, in the region. And like I said a moment ago, it's adjacent to a cemetery, a genuine bush cemetery, just out from Murray Bateman probably about 40 odd k's from Canberra and about 15 k's or so from Yass. So I have taken a bit of a detour but I'm having my lunch here and uh, to be honest a very nice peaceful quiet area. About 120 k's out of Sydney and I just pulled over at a driver reviver stop uh, not because I felt like I was that tired and not because I wanted a coffee but because in fact I wanted some donuts. How cool is that? I've never seen that before. But there we go, makes sense though. So I'm now going to get some donuts and then get on to Sydney. So here they are, my cup of mini donuts. Boy, they look good. And let me tell you something I wish you had smell vision because, boy, they smell good too. I'm going to definitely enjoy this.